Good morning. My name is Rachel, and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I'm here today to go over my June wrap-up. I read 11 stories in the month of June. And to start off, I have two short stories that I read online. And the first one is Two Truths and a Lie by Sarah Pinkster. So during the story, when a woman goes back to visit her parents, one of her childhood friends has experienced a death in his family of her of his brother, and his brother was a hoarder. And she volunteers to help him one day go through the items to start clearing out the family home. And while they are doing so, they come across an old children's show, and she has no memory of this. Now, this main character has a habit of lying. She likes she just lies and makes up stories all the time for everyone. And so when the she found the show, she made up what she thought was a lie, and then her friend was like, oh yeah, no, I remember that. She was very surprised because in her mind she had made it up. And then doing some more research, found out that she had been on the show. And my final note for this is, woman finds that she has gaps in her memory and in the end is an empty story. And I think that sums up, I really enjoyed it. Now, the second short story I did not enjoy as much, and it is Where You Linger by Bonnie Jo Shufflebeam. And this story is about a woman who, after she's divorced and is going through the grieving process with this, she decides to use the technology that is available to go back through her memories and experience her past sexual encounters so that she can experience one more time the history with her true love, who has now divorced her. And I found the main character annoying, both versions of herself, because she ends up meeting herself. I don't this is going to be harsh, but I feel like I lost minutes while I read this, and it would have been better if I had never read it. That's how much I did not care what was happening, and yet somehow I managed to finish it. Then moving on to happier items, I then finished A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark, and I am going to put up my review that I did for that. This follows Fatma from the Supernatural Agency, who is called out to solve a murder of a group that has been mysteriously burned. Well, their flesh has been burned, but their clothes has not. And she ends up investigating with a new female partner, also learning more about the history of the jinn, and maybe al Jahiz has returned. I really enjoyed this story and I gave it a four stars. The reason why I gave it a four stars is in the review, it's more of a spoiler, but it has to do with a trope of women dismissing women, and it's not my favorite trope. Then next I finished The Consuming Fire by John Scalzi. This is number two in his Interdependency series, where we are continuing to follow Greyland as she is trying to convince the Empire the, that they need to change. The flow, which is kind of like travel wormholes, is disappearing, they're shifting, they're changing, and she wants to get everyone so they are self-sufficient so that they can live on their own and not die rapidly. In this story, Lord Mars, or Count Mars, in this story, Mars gets the opportunity to travel to an old system for a short while and then finds out it is possible to continue to live, which gives us hope for the final book in the trilogy. And I gave this book four stars as well. And then this month I read volumes one and two of the graphic novel called Die by Kieran Gian and Stephanie Hans. I think the artwork in this is stunning. It, it just really works for me. And this series is Jumanji meets Dungeons and Dragon or another role-playing game. It starts off with a six group of kids are playing, are going to play this new game called Die, 
and they end up disappearing for two years. And when they come back, they come back one person short and one of the characters no longer has her arm. Then later as adults, they end up finding a way back into Dai and not everybody wants to stay there and other people are wanting to make things better for the citizens of Dai. And I gave both of these volumes four stars. I realized I didn't go into why I'm really enjoying Dai, I just gave the synopsis. So one of the things I'm really loving are the characters. You have the five of them, well six if you count the one that was left behind, and they are full unique people with different things going on and in their real world. And that is where you get the conflict of some people want to leave immediately, some people want to stay, and how the group keeps shifting and changing as they try to work together and then are at odds with one another. The authors are very good about layering the information line upon line as the characters are learning it and how that affects the decisions that they are making. And I'm just really enjoying the character dynamics of this. Next I read Come Tumbling Down by Shannon McGuire. This is going to give some spoilers if you're not familiar with this series. And in this we get to meet Jack and Jill again. Jill has stolen Jack's body and Jack returns to the school to enlist help to get her body back. A group of students are able to go visit Jack's world, which is the Moors. And I find the Moors very interesting. This was a really well written novella. I find that in this series there'll be a really interesting, I mean, there's a very compelling, like, character-driven novella, and then the next one is a lot more telling, and it tells you about events that have happened in the past, and you never get to see them. So this is the one where you're with them, you're finding things out. It did throw some random things at us that just kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. There was no basis for it. There was nothing that was set up in previous books. And so while I am enjoying this series, I can't say that every time I'm loving them. And because I know her standard is one book we are immersed and then another book it's more telling, I'm kind of afraid to read the next book to get a telling story. So if you have read the next book in the series, please let me know. Is it more of she's just telling you things that happen and you're not seeing it or experience it with the character? Or is it more you get to go along with the character and experience these things? And I gave this four stars. Next I read the novella Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. And this was a very immersive short story, very immersive novella, where we are following Toby, who is the green man. And then Henry Silver is the new landlord for the area around there. And he enters the wood and is trying to find out more information about the wood. And in the process of this story, we get to see the green man who has been very focused on maintaining this wood now has to re-enter the world around him. And it's not the same as when he first became connected to the forest. It's 400 years later, and a lot has changed. And so when I describe this book as immersive, I am saying that when you are in the woods, it you feel like you are physically there how everything is described. You can almost see the dryads. You can feel the unease and the evil that is there as well. And so this really is a story that you jump in and you just go with it. And just because it's so short, I don't want to give any more information because I don't want to spoil this story. And I also gave this four stars. Then I read A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. This is the second in her Wayfarers series, and this follows Sidra, who used to be Lovelace in the Wayfarers, but now is in a body. And Sidra has gone to live with Pepper, who is a tech person. And you, you meet Pepper briefly in the first book. This book is Sidra trying to find a way to be comfortable in a body instead of in a ship how she was originally made and it's illegal for AIs to have a body, so they're working around that as well. And at the same time, Sidra is making a new friend, apart from Pepper and Blue, who she lives with, and balancing that. And it was a great story. I really loved it. I like the interspersed scenes where 
we are following Sidra as she moves forward, and then when we go back and we're following a young girl named Jane, and how that connects up to the present time. And I know I've heard somebody say that Becky Chambers is really about hope. I mean, that's her writing. It's very hopeful, makes you feel warm inside, and this really does do this. And I hope that I get to see glimpses of Sidra here in the future, because I'm curious to know what she continues to go forward and do. And I gave this five stars. Then for the translate-a-thon, I finished My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Bachman. And I read the English translation of this. Ugh, Bachman just has a way with words and circumstances. And I cried. This is the second book I've read by him, and I am definitely will be picking more up in the future. In this book, we follow Elsa, who is seven almost eight though, that's important, and we're following her perspective as she watches her grandmother die of cancer and then is going through the grieving process and trying to figure out what is going on. And her granny has for years been her best friend and they had a make-believe land called the Land of Almost Awake where granny has told her many fairy tales. Granny's last wish for her was to do a treasure hunt and this treasure hunt, Elsa has to deliver letters. Through the process of this, she actually gets to, she actually meets and gets to know her neighbors better. She, yeah, she lives in an apartment building, and while she has seen these neighbors most of her life, or has known most of these neighbors her, her life, she hasn't known their history or their story. And that is what Granny is giving her. So for this story, you really need to enjoy following the logic of a almost eight-year-old. One of the things I loved is there are characters in this book where Granny and the adults probably know this person's name, but she just is like, oh, that's the monster. Or, oh, that's the woman in the black skirt who at this point in time is wearing jeans. She doesn't care what their name is. That's just how children are. They're very focused or very egocentric. And I loved that Bachman caught that quality. And I gave this five stars. And the last thing I finished in the month of June is The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo. This is a novella. Shortly after the death of the Empress of Salt and Fortune, different restricted areas have been lifted and a cleric who collects history is nearby is passing nearby to one of the, or is passing nearby to the house where the Empress had lived and exiled before she took over the country. And she goes to see what she can find. And while there, meets Rabbit, one of the Empress's longest and most trusted attendants. And by going through the items that are left in this house and talking to Rabbit, she learns the history of how the Empress came to this country and what happened to her and then how she became in control. And it is beautifully written. I really enjoyed it and I'm excited to continue with this novella series as well. And I gave this five stars. If you have read any of these items, please Talk to me about them in the comments. I would love to talk to you about them. And thank you, and have a great day.